Good morning, a good day. I will be your moderator for today's class. Today is Thursday, June 8th, 2023. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video button during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kimley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, with students studying with us from the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. Please mute. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and the original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means Elohim is the title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name, a minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and the original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible inscrutable and indiscernible. 
He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud in like manner. Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahweh, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of a holy name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this divine tabernacle pattern and a vision. He later on instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now, this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. In this school, we have 10 primary aims and objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Number three is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons. 
operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly continue for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10th is to inherit eternal life. Now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. We'd like to open this class this morning with the prayer by uh, uh, Sister Phyllis McCoy. Uh, we'd like to have our scripture lesson, which is 1 John, the fourth chapter. If uh, Tracy, if uh, Sister Tracy Robinson is available, uh, could she read our scripture lesson and a song we didn't discuss, so I can give a song or if Lenore has one. That's fine, Dr. McCain, take it away. All righty, I pray. Good morning, class. May we all bow our hearts and minds for a word of prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah. Father, we are so grateful and thankful for another opportunity to come before you in spirit and in truth in our hearts and minds, knowing that we are so privy to this great gospel that you have allowed us to be partakers of. And we are forever grateful and thankful. And we pray in the name of Yahshua the Messiah that each and every day, every moment of our lives, that we live the things that we learn in this gospel, that we might be manifested, manifesting the things that we are learning of this great truth. And we ask that you continue to keep us, lead us, guide us, direct our paths, and to allow us to be um, forever and forever grateful and thankful. In Yahshua the Messiah's name, I pray this prayer. May we all say hallelujah. 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 Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning, Jackie. If you Yahshua gives us strength. Mm. When we knew him not. When you come to know him, he's really all you got. In him's eternal life. I, through the shedding, the shedding of his blood, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. If you seek him now in this kingdom, you will be in him and he in you. Mm -hmm. So look to Yahshua, for he'll give you strength. He'll show you what to do. Mm -hmm. Through the shedding, the shedding of his blood, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Mm. Give it all to Yahshua. You just give it all to him. He will carry the load. Give it all to Yahshua and it will be all right. 
it will be all right. Or oh, when you come to know the truth, the hope and faith it'll bring, yes. To know him is to love him and sing in praises to his name. The father who is Yahweh, the son is Elohim. Yahshua is the Holy Spirit and eternal life's in him. You gotta give it all, give it all to Yahshua. You just give it all to him. He will carry the load. Oh, yes, he will just give it all to Yahshua. And it will be all right. He promised it. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Tracy. Okay, go ahead. Did you still need okay. someone Tracy, to read these scriptures? Tracy Robinson is just not available. First John, the fourth chapter. Okay, I'll read it. First John 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Yahweh, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the spirit of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesses that Yashna Messiah is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. And this is that spirit of the anti-Messiah, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. You are of Yahweh, little children, and have overcome it. Because greater is he that is in you than he which is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of Yahweh. He that knoweth Yahweh heareth us. He that is not of Yahweh heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Yahweh, and every one that loveth is born of Yahweh and knoweth Yahweh. He that loveth not knoweth not Yahweh, for Yahweh is love. In this was manifested the love of Yahweh towards us, because that he sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved Yahweh, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if Yahweh so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen Yahweh at any time. If we love one another, Yahweh dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen him, we have seen and to testify, to testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Yahshua is the Son of Yahweh, Yahweh dwelleth in him, and he in Yahweh. And we have known and believed the love that Yahweh hath towards us. Yahweh is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Yahweh, and Yahweh in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love Yahweh and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love Yahweh whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we, have we from him, that he who love Yahweh love his brother also. And this is First John 4 chapter. Praise Yahshua. 
We thank everyone for their participation. I'd like to now turn this over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everybody. I have a, a new transcript today. It is called, The Church is the Body of Yahshua. And I wanted to, um, Dr. Kinley refers to this in the, tra in the uh, transcript. So I wanted to know if nobody has anything to say about the transcript then we can go on with the transcript it is up to you does anybody have anything that they would like to say concerning the scripture reading oh i failed to announce the readers our readers today would be dr deborah van hook and if lucy could grace her with her beautiful voice we would appreciate it be the second reader I can do that. Thank you. Okay, anybody? anybody? Okay, then we can start. I have a question. I'm sorry. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, I, this is Candace, and I would like to um, know what I can do to, um, based on the reading, it was saying that, you know, you can't say that you love Yahweh if you don't have love for your brethren. And that's something that I'm dealing with, um, which is, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's really affecting me, which is why I wasn't able to come yesterday, because I was just uh, doing some things that um, really uh, had me questioning, like, questioning myself, and I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to live like I used to live, so I'm having a problem with people in the world that are you know, saying, oh, Jesus this and, you know, God this and all this stuff. And I love God and all this stuff. But then they're causing me harm. Like they're saying things to me that are not uh, loving. They're, they're doing things to me that are not, you know, okay. And I don't know how to be quiet and be peaceful when I'm presented with hate. So if anybody can Give me some uh, encouragement, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I just got one thing to say about this. It's short and sweet. Can we get um, Matthew 12, 46 through 50? Because I, I think I have an idea what you're talking about. And it's like, if you say you don't love your brother, how can you say you love me when you don't love your brother? But I think the point that, you got, that we got to look at is like, who is your brother? I mean, I was, in fact, I was talking to somebody, you come in, kill my cat, rip my couch, and I'm supposed to love you? You know, right. um, Matthew 12 and 46. Matthew 12, 46. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then, said, then one said unto him, behold, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Now you're living in the world. You are living in the world. The world, for the most part, is under the um. And I don't. I like. I don't like to use this word under the control or under the influence. That's better, of of Satan. They have been taught by the world that um, you know, my any name is is you know he knows my will and all this kind of stuff. They have not been taught to respect their heavenly father, mostly because they don't know their heavenly father. And so we are as fishers of men, those who would want to know what it is our desire to find, to help you, the, you know, first, um, the first aim to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. And you're walking around those who have no desire to know I just found a very careful, I found a very helpful, I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words. I found a very 
helpful to say, well, who is my brethren? Whosoever will do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. So they're saying, go outside and talk to your family. He's saying, this is my family right here. Now there's a whole lot more that I'm sure I've overlooked. If anybody has anything else to say about this, we would welcome it. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, in the scripture lesson, you might as well get right before it, which is 1 John 3 and, well, 23, I guess. But there's so, I mean, you might as well start at 4, well, hmm. no, 1 John 3 and 1. Yeah, do what you want. It's necessary. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Now, see, they don't, the world, that means somebody that doesn't know the truth yet. Uh, they didn't believe him and they don't believe us either. Or you'd see a whole bunch of people uh, praising Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. <clears throat> but he's showed his love toward us by telling us the truth. And if you responded and, and you received it and you are a true recipient of the Holy Spirit, then you're a son of Yahweh. And the world knoweth you not because it knew him not. Read on. Beloved, now are we the children of Yahweh, and it doth not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Uh, so you are, <clears throat> so we're the sons of Yahweh, and it doesn't appear what we're going to be, the, those immortal glorified bodies that we're going to get. But we know that at the universal revelation, we shall be like him. You're going to get a spirit embodiment. Uh, and you're going to have to, but you have to go through these physical things that go on. These are trials of our faith. Um, but let's just read 14. I don't want to read too much here, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that's nice in this scripture. But, uh, well, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You Follow well, that cloud. See, I haven't said that in a long time. You might as well read three and four there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Okay, go ahead. And ye know that he was manifested to take away, uh, take away our sins, and, he, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither know him. Little ch children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the adversary. So now right the, there, okay. it said he that committed sin is of the devil. Now <laughs> see, some people, they still say, yeah, I'm a sinner. You understand? Well, whoever committed sin is of the devil. Mm. So sometimes who you're dealing with are demons. <laughs> you understand? And that's, you know, they're not your brethren, right? <laughs> but, uh, but we still, we've all been wrong too. But, you know, even when Yahshua was on the cross, they crucified him. And he said in uh, Luke uh, 23, 34, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And people don't know what they're doing. You understand? They don't know what spirit they are. And that's kind of the way the scripture lesson is. Uh, so he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. And we've all been wrong ourselves. That's why we don't exalt ourselves. But you will be persecuted for knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. And people do, uh, well, people do all kind of crazy things out there. Yeah. Uh, and that's why you call on Yahshua to help help you out, see. Uh, for this is the purpose of, 
the son of Yahweh was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, he brought an end to the sin and died, buried, resurrected, and poured out the Holy Spirit. And now you can overcome those things through the Holy Spirit, see? Uh, uh, okay, uh, I, I don't want to read too much more, but let's go to 14, though, just because he's going to talk about how somebody, uh, uh, go read that. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Yeah. Hereby so now, and, and he would say, I mean, there's a time when he would call the Pope uh, uh, a bastard and call him an old bastard. And somebody says, well, it says to love your brother. He said, uh, uh, if he don't believe the scriptures and he can't take chastisement from the scriptures, he's not a brother. He's a bastard and not a son. Uh, and that's in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Yep. Uh, and so uh, we know that we pass from death and life because we love the brother. Now I want the 23rd verse just because this is, a, this is his commandment now. Now, this is what he says, his commandment. This is his commandment. Read that. And, and this is his, his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua the Messiah, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, see, this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua the Messiah, and love one another as as he gave us commandment. And Dr. Kimley used to say, uh, how can I prove my love? He said, if I know the truth, I'll tell it to you. And I tell you what, when you tell people the truth, uh, they're not so happy. Just like, and they didn't believe Yahshua the Messiah when he walked around and that was Yahweh in a body. All the things he did, healed people of all manner diseases. Uh, he just did, you know, I mean, uh prophesied things that was gonna everything he said come to pass uh stop the wind blowing and the waves raging and and uh walked on water fed five five thousand with five loaves two fish you think you'd want that person around but people got they got jealous and them demons got crazy and they ended up and and crucified him and even the people that he healed and cast demons out they came back in them and said yeah crucify him <laughs> that's really pretty wild so yeah that satanic spirit is but this is uh, but if we know the truth we're going to tell him so it says that uh, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son yasha messiah and love one another as he hath given us commandment and he that keepeth his commandments dwelt in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Now he starts on the scripture lesson now, four and one, which is uh, really almost takes the whole, it will answer part of your question. <laughs> Dr. Frank, she put in the chat, what? So I don't know. Uh, what she people don't know much about demons. You understand? Yeah, and he cast King demons Eric. out, but why did all the people say crucify him? Mm -hmm. It's because them demons got back in them. They didn't even remember the things he did. And they followed the crowd. And doesn't the world follow the crowd? Mm -hmm. Just like we've been going into how his birthday to June 6th. <laughs> you can prove that to somebody. You can tell people that. You can show it's the day of Pentecost. And they still don't care. And, and say, well, I'm selling, you know, you ain't gonna stop me from keeping Christmas and December, you know what I'm saying? Worshiping the wrong way, in other words. Just like when you tell them the name Joshua, they're gonna say, not me, I'm gonna keep using Jesus. You understand? And uh, so that's not the brethren when they don't receive uh, the Holy, well, the things of the Holy Spirit. He said, neither is there salvation in the others. None other name under heaven given among men whereby man can be saved. That's what the Holy Spirit said. That means there's only one name you can be saved in. 
That's Yahshua. So what's the devil going to do? Give you some other name besides that. Right. And they're going to worship something other than that. So here's what he tells them in 1 John 4 and 1. Read that. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Yahweh, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, this is 1900 years ago, but it's up to date. It says beloved, and not everybody's the beloved. The beloved he's writing to are the believers that believe in the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. But he's writing to people that have been taught in the school, see? And he says, beloved, uh, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they are of Yahweh. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. See, and, and that's many back there. What do you think it is now? Many more. And when Yahshua walked around in Matthew 24, 11, he said, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem we have out there is that uh, out here, you know, uh, he's this, he, false prophets. You got false teachers saying they believe the Bible. And then the things that are not in the Bible, they're teaching people by traditions. And, and they've deceived many. The devil deceived the whole world. Okay, keep reading. Now here's by here. Keep reading there. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesseth that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. And now it says, Every hereby know you the spirit of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua Messiah is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. You know what that means? That sent when he poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, that's when the spirit of Yahweh come in the flesh. It, it, that's when Yahshua came in the flesh as the Holy Spirit in mankind. And if you confess, if you every spirit that confesses that Yahshua Messiah is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. Now, how many people are saying, well, read the next part. <laughs> And every spirit that confesseth not that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. And this is that spirit. And you know what that is? Messiah. That's the people saying Jesus is coming. They're saying he hadn't come in the flesh yet. It doesn't mean that he hadn't come back there when he walked around before he died, buried, resurrected. It means since the day of Pentecost. He came as the Holy Spirit, but people aren't seeing him as the Holy Spirit. They're saying Jesus is coming back soon. You know, in other words, and every spirit that confesseth not that Yahshua Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. And this is the spirit of the anti-Messiah. Where have you heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world? It was already in the world, the anti-Messiah, 1900 years ago. So you, where do you think he is today? He's still in the world. That's what's causing all the hell and the, and the murder and the rape and the, and the, well, all the stuff that goes on, the, the evil stuff. And the lying in the pulpit, the souls. You understand? Preaching false doctrine. Those are demons. Uh, and that's what we're, and that's what we say. We're not against people, but we are against false doctrine. And we do know that demons exist. And, uh, and, and, and they will, they do raise hell. <laughs> and they do try to make a, uh, they try to get you down and make you depressed and they work through uh, all kind of people. Uh, uh, they can work through family members. They can work through, uh, well, it's just a lot of people. And, uh, and that's why you need a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit to get you through these things. See, now read the fourth verse. Ye are of Yahweh, little children. And have overcome it because well, the whole the King James says overcome them. That's them demons. Okay. Uh, you're, you're of Yahweh, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now the fifth verse says, They 
are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. All they can do is speak carnal and speak the way the world is and be hateful and be uh, just, you know, all kind of anything to drag you down. Remember that uh, when you're part of, when people are part of, or when demons, well, when souls are possessed, they're part of the dragon and the dragon will drag you on down and they try to drag you down with them. You understand? Uh, and that's why you do need to, uh, this knowledge and understanding because it lifts you up. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And Hallelujah, so, yes. Oh. So when you go through these things, they, they're like a death bear. We call them the gospel. <laughs> it brings you down. It's like a death and a burial in your life. But to Yahshua the Messiah, he's the resurrection of life. So you can get resurrected out of that and be comforted by him because you know the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, there are so many things, but it says they are of the world. Therefore, they speak. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Does the world hear you? If you tell them about Yahshua and Yahweh, much of the time they don't care. Right. And they don't want to know. And they just, they just don't know that they don't know. And then after we find out, you know, we might find out something. We might go out there and try to tell them, and boy, they just spit it out like it's nothing. And then sometimes we don't know as much as we should and, and they can whip you up because they, they know a lot of stuff about things and you might not have that understanding yet too. So it's a, there is a growing process. I'll say it that way. Thank you so uh, much, everyone. Thank you. I think we can continue on with the lesson. Thank you so much. I am more than satisfied. I think I can start off. And um, yeah, so if you guys don't mind, you guys can continue on with um, with the regular um, teachings. But thank you so much. I feel, oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Praise Joshua. Praise now, this, now, the sixth verse, you at least have that read. It says, uh, we're of Yahweh. He that knoweth Yahweh heareth us. He that is not of Yahweh heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what that's what the Holy Spirit is, the spirit of truth. And uh, there's only one truth. Right. And Yahshua the Messiah said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You got to come through Yahshua. And some people will say, well, I know Jesus has come. Well, I'll tell you what, you wouldn't be eating no, you wouldn't be eating no Lord's Supper because it's in the Bible as get that just one part there. Uh, get uh first Corinth, uh, because when he says uh get first Corinthians eleven and twenty. This Dr. is the only, place in, the, the only place in the Bible that has Lord's Supper in it. First Corinthians 11 and 20. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Yeah. yeah. You know how many people's telling you to eat the Lord's Supper out there in the church? You understand? And then it's in the Bible. That's the only time the word Lord's Supper is in the Bible. And he says, when you therefore come together in one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Uh, read. Or and you know, eating. yeah, you know why? Well, go ahead. For in eating, everyone taketh before others his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or See, and those people, eating. those people that are hungry, they want to know. Uh, and the other one, he's drunken off a of false doctrine. <laughs> Read on. Or despise you, the church. And you don't want to take your own supper. That means your own understanding. <laughs> you take you. You're the Lord of your own supper. <laughs> In other words, you just eat what you believe. No, you need to eat from His table. Read on. Or despise you, the church or the assembly of Yahweh, and shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. 
Now he said, what have you not houses to eat and drink in? That's where he set up the Passover was in the house. It was never done in a church. Not one verse in the Bible did they eat it in a church. It was done in a house. Why is that? Because it has to be done in your house. That's where the Passover is, is you to pass over, as Romans 8 and 6 says, to be carnally minded, which is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You need to change over from being physically minded to being spiritually minded. But the world is physically minded. And, uh, and we were too. But that's what the conversion is. It's to change you from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. And be physically minded to being spiritually minded. And so but then it says, now here's the 23rd verse is what they use when they administer the Lord's Supper to people. But he, they didn't read up there at 20 when he said, when you therefore come into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. And then when you tell people that, they say, well, see what they were doing. They were doing it wrong. No, he's telling them that you, in the, in the Schofield Reference Bible, it says you cannot eat it. Uh, why? Because Joshua fulfilled it. Okay, what's 22 say? What? Have ye not houses to no, eat? No, 23. And to drink I'm sorry, we're at 23 now. For I have received of Yahweh that which I also delivered unto you, that Yahshua the Messiah, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now, he's he wasn't there, but he's recounting what Yahshua said to his disciples. Right before he was crucified, the night before, he's keeping the Passover. And he said, this do in remembrance of me. You know why? Because it was a memorial Passover, and they had to do it ever since Egypt, and it was testifying of him. He's not telling you this doing remembrance of me. And then you write it on the Lord's, you write it on the table in front of the church pulpit. And then that's where you have the Lord's Supper every whatever time they have it. Um, that, that, he's not talking to you. He was talking to them. And keep reading because you'll find that out in, in a little bit. A couple of verses now. Read. Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this is the New Testament in, sorry, this is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show Yahshua's death until he come. Now, see, it says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show Yahshua's death till he come. Well, see, he did. So that means while they were eating it, well, and then he was the Passover on the cross the next day. And so he did die, and then he did bury, and then he did resurrect. So that was him coming back on the third day. Then he tarried 40 days making spiritual appearances. Then he ascends. And when he pours out the Holy Spirit, that was him coming back in their heart and mind. And he did it in the same upper room as they ate the Passover. They received the true Passover, which is the Holy Spirit in their heart and mind. So as often as you eat that bread, drink that cup, that, 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 this cup, you show forth the Messiah's death till he comes. And if you're, and if you, and didn't we just read in the scripture lesson, every spirit that confesses that he's not come is the spirit of the anti Messiah. So when you're still eating that Passover, you're saying he hadn't come yet. And that's the spirit of the anti Messiah. You're denying that he fulfilled it and brought it to an end. See, and it takes a little bit to get that understanding. You understand? But that's the way it is. They're saying he hadn't, when you, say he's come into your heart and then you're eating a physical thing that he fulfilled and you really hasn't come in your heart and mind because you don't understand that he fulfilled it and brought it to an end and by you doing it he never told you to do it you're being lied to and that's that satanic spirit deceiving uh these billions of people doing it 
there's a lot more to it, you know. Even when you go to Matthew the 26, just do that last part. 26 and about 29, I think it is. Uh, you know, he eats the Passover. He's eating the roasted lamb. As they were eating, Joshua took bread and break it and blessed it and give it to the disciples and said, this is my body. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to him saying, drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So he said he wasn't going to drink it like that no more until he drinks it new to you in his father's kingdom. When did that happen? He's talking to his disciples. It happened on the day of Pentecost. That's when he drank it new with them in their father's kingdoms, when he poured out the Holy Spirit in their heart and mind. And that's what Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. That's when he drank it new with them. You see how the people are still drinking it the old way? And plus, they had a roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. It was a feast. It wasn't crackers and grape juice. That's nowhere in the Bible. Well, who's feeding you that foolishness? Not, not Yahshua. Not the Holy Spirit. So, uh, well, you asked to kind of go into the scripture lesson. That's kind of one little way of going into it. <laughs> <laughs> we've been taught a lot of stuff in this school you know what i'm saying <laughs> so uh excuse me dr lewis i just want to make this comment because you know that is a very important comment that you just said about how they um they they had a feast and they gave us crackers and grape juice and i questioned that um when i was in the church i questioned that uh point about well, they had this. Why are we eating this? And they told me, oh, this is just a um, representation yeah. of, uh, yeah. And and I was like, oh, okay, I accepted it because, I mean, you know, I had to accept what they said, but I did ask the question because I was like, well, they were eating this, so why do we eat this? So, you know, but. It's, and that's it's why we go. That's right. And that's why we go back to Exodus, the 12th chapter. It mm -hmm. was done the first month, 14th day of the month. They had right. roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. It was done at night. It mm -hmm. was done in a house. Mm -hmm. And it was a feast. Well, they're not doing none of that. They're eating it during the day. Yeah. They're eating it Every, in the church. Some and they're of them, having crackers and grape juice. And they do it, it once there. a month. And sometimes some of them do it yeah, every week. That's right. <laughs> if you're a Baptist, it. you do it every first Sunday. When does the that's first right. Sunday come on the 14th? Right. Never. <laughs> Not once. So, so they, yeah. they, they fooled us. They lied to us. Yeah. And we accepted it because we didn't know any better. And the Holy Spirit had not shown us anything. That's right. And, you know, because we were using the wrong names. And it's so... Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, you were, we were all taught false doctrine. That's yep. right. The Roman Catholic Church started it, calling it transubstantiation, that they're changing. Right. When they, it looks like bread, tastes like bread, but we just changed it at Jesus' actual body. Actual body. Yeah, that was crazy. And then pray okay. over the wine, and they, it's, and now it's it Jesus' blood. blood. It's called the real presence. They're the only church that can do that. The other ones are saying it's a symbol, but they're, we're doing it they actually. Huh? Yeah. Wait a minute. But I'm going to tell you this, too. The, the Protestants, though, they, they these Baptist people, they didn't believe in what they were, uh, the fact that they were saying that it was the actual body. They didn't believe what the Catholics did. Well, that's you know, the consubstantiation. Yeah, yeah, that's called consubstantiation. But, yeah, but they which, still was, what they were doing was wrong, too. Of yeah, course, because it's not. Because it's a, uh, why do you need the symbol when you have the reality? reality. And plus, Jeremiah 3, 15, it says, yes. I'll send pastors after my own heart oh, who will heart. feed mm -hmm. you with knowledge and understanding. That's mm -hmm. what they're supposed to be feeding you with, yeah. not yeah. crackers and grape juice. So and you see they use that scripture too. And uh, that's the attributes of Yahweh, knowledge, understanding. That's right. Yeah. And then Revelation 3 and 20, 
This is the seventh assembly. Well, 319, we'll say that, that start there. I'm sorry. I heard at attributes of Yahweh. Where can I find that? Oh. Well, she she just said uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 3. 15. Jeremiah 15. 315. But you want to know what are the attributes of Yahweh? Yes, yeah. I believe I just heard someone say that. Is that true? Yeah. Oh. I yeah, you can find it in Isaiah 11th, and, and it will say the spirit of Yahweh, and it will say yeah. like Isaiah the 11th chapter, and I think yeah. it's Exodus the 32nd well chapter. Thing. You want to do that. that? Yeah, you might as well read Exodus 31. It was about two, or is it? This is when he gave the guys to make the tabernacle. See, the tabernacle okay. was shown mm -hmm. to Moses by the spirit, and Moses had the spirit to remember everything Yahweh said. Mm. <laughs> and now he's going to have these guys build the tabernacle. So here's Exodus 31 and 2. See, I have 31, 2. See, I have called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Yahweh in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. So you see a filled him with the spirit of Elohim, Yahweh mm -hmm. Elohim, in mm -hmm. wisdom and mm -hmm. in understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. So see, crack, uh, crackers and grape juice will not give you the spirit of wisdom, understanding and knowledge. You understand? Eating crackers and grape juice, they don't even feed the physical body. Would that help your spirit body any? No. Okay, read Isaiah 11 and 1 there. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. Now you see that spirit there? The mm -hmm. spirit will give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. People mm -hmm. don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go down there, uh, somebody dunking you down in water and feeding you crackers and grape juice and taking your money. Is that, the, is that going to give you spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding no. and counsel and might mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> those are those are spirit attributes see and that's what this school that you know the Ho holy spirit said in john 17 and 3 he said and this is life eternal that they might know that yahweh is the only true elohim and yasha messiah and thou is sent and what she was showing here when we have this moses chart these attributes uh, and Moses's chart, uh, the attribute, we're see where we can see it real good, Lenore. You can't see it that good right there. <clears throat> I just want to show real fast that the attributes take, you know, showing forth from the Messiah. He is intelligence, wisdom, knowledge. You can see how it goes forth in the body, like your head. Tell yeah, the 40 chart. play chart will show that too. Beauty, love. Um, what and you can see it better there foundation power and strength they're so you small want, you can barely read it i i know but i okay all okay. right what do you what do you want the 40 play chart you could show it okay the 40 play chart all and right. that will show that that's him that's the theosophy plate okay all right yeah okay all right. so you see these attributes of intelligent wisdom knowledge uh, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength, and the kingdom. See, that's that the Holy Spirit activates your soul, and that places you into the kingdom. See, mm. and, then, and then you see the Yah heads, the next plate, and you see how he's got intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge in the in the head region, and then beauty, love, and justice in the uh, chest region, and then foundation, power, and strength there. Now, that's what makes up your soul, mm -hmm. see, uh, and it takes the Holy Spirit to change. Well, uh, before you come into class, all you've, you've, you, you are capable of learning and loving and you see beauty and, 
but you you only have it as a physical understanding mm -hmm. but when the whole but when your uh heart and mind, when when them demons are cast you're, you're serving the creature and the and and the devil because <laughs> you've been lied to all your life but now when the truth comes those things that that satanic spirit can be cast out of you by the preaching of the gospel and you can be a true recipient of the holy spirit and now those attributes are now creator serving and yeah. and and uh and you're giving him thanks and praise in in righteousness through the holy spirit see and yeah. so that's that's and so there's nine systems of your human human body which is uh uh nervous system uh the, the end, endocrine system the reproductive system the respiratory digestive uh, circulatory and the excretory and the digestive and the muscular muscular and the skeletal system so those those systems of your physical body are representative by those uh by the uh by the attributes of your soul your spirit mm. and body mm. and that's why there's nine gifts of the spirit that's first uh corinthians 12 and 8 uh, you might as well read that uh that's why and there's and that's why when she shows you this picture here you got the high priest with the nine he has nine garments but it has the nine attributes on him there uh but there's nine garments there the pattern had nine vessels it took nine months to build your body has nine systems the planet is nine planets solar system all these things are Yahweh showing himself how he's of these nine divine attributes. And when you have divine nine attributes, that's DNA. Mm. That's the spiritual DNA. <laughs> now. <laughs> divine I'm sorry. nine attributes. <laughs> uh, see, everything in the physical DNA is representing a spiritual principle of spiritual DNA. And you don't learn this out in no church. Uh, Pope don't know nothing about this, and he got a book sent to him about it. And he still don't know it. Well, yeah. What uh, was that scripture you wanted? First Corinthians twelve and eight. There. Okay. Did somebody get it? First Corinthians twelve and eight. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Now you see how it's the same Holy Spirit, but it's, but it's wisdom, knowledge, faith. Read on. Yeah. To another the working healing. of miracles. Okay, working of miracles. To another prophecy. And prophecy to another, can be prophesied and also to teach, read. To another discerning of spirits. Yeah, very important to be able to know if it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you or if those are demons. Right. That's a discerning of spirit, whether something's true or false. Right. What if it's a demon? Huh? You can't hear you. It's a demon. And I, my spirit says, that is a demon. What do I do? Well. They called Yahshua the Elzebub. Yeah, well, what she's mean, saying when you come across a demon, what do you do? You just speak the truth. Well, they yeah, they do have a soul. You understand? So that but really, okay, I'll tell you this. You know, when uh, the children of Israel were down in Egypt, they weren't yeah. Egyptians. They were under the influence. Right. Uh -huh. So when I when you know, I mean, well, when you drink alcohol, uh, -huh. uh you can get drunk. Your behavior changes and everything else. Yeah. Uh, but you're not alcohol. You're under the influence. Yes. So really that soul of that person, they're not a demon, but they're under the influence and they I, just need, they just need help. And, uh, and sometimes the truth will help them. Of course. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And you could, you could say, you know, and if they go too much, you could just, uh, put the name Yashua on them. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, they don't like that. They don't like that. They, I've been talking. Well, well, all I've been saying. Okay, okay. 
Go ahead, go may, ahead, Dr. May Bird. I say something? I sure. had my hand up for quite a while. Okay. And I just wanted to Don't say worry about the hand. Just talk. <laughs> I wanted to say to Candace, um, when you first asked your question, I think you asked, what should you do because yes. of the response that you were getting from yes. people in the world? And yes. we, we were initially reading in um, First John, the third chapter, and I wondered if we could go back to First John, the third chapter, verse seven and verse 24, just basically tell you what you should do because you won't be able to necessarily change them, but it might give you some comfort. What did you want, First John? What? Yeah, thank you. Thank three, you. Three and seven. Yes. And thank three you. and twenty-four. I okay. need to be comforted. Thank you so much. Oh, thank. You. Okay, go I'm ahead. So Somebody gonna read it. First John First. three and seven. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. 24. Yes. Is that first John third chapter? Yes. And he that keeps keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Mm. So basically, let that try to be your comfort because as long as you're in this teaching and you try to tell different persons, you won't always get a positive response. Right. You may get very negative responses. So just know that if you do, what he has instructed you to do, then you'll be all right. It'll be all right. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that's a help. That was very helpful. What is your name, ma'am? My name is Jean Burris Robinson. Yes, ma'am. It's so nice speaking with you, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and you. You you are certainly welcome. And uh, wh whomever is able to help me, I have difficulty with this tablet. So I'm going to try to take my name down, but if it doesn't come down, I hope somebody else can take it down for me. And thank you, Frank. Uh, you're welcome, but you know, I tell you, I don't even see no hands because I, yeah, uh, I my screen, know. my screen doesn't even show that, so that's why I don't know about those things. Uh, you know, the iPad, we don't even have a, I don't ever see a hand, <laughs> so that's why, I, I, you know, that's why I don't know. Okay, uh, read John fourteen and uh, uh, sixteen and seventeen because that talks about the spirit there. Mm -hmm. And it's important. He's talking to his disciples here. And uh, well, there's a lot of stuff there, but I can't can't do everything there. Yeah. Joshua is talking to his disciples. Okay. Yeah. And he says, I'll pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So when he was walking around with them, he was comforting them, but he was talking about the Holy Spirit. 
And then he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So, so after is, so he was dwelling with them, but then after he died, buried, resurrected, ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit, he got in them. And that's the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. And that's the comforter that will comfort you in these, you know, what are the things you have to go through in this life, because you're going to go through things. Everybody goes through things. Hallelujah. Read 1426. Mm -hmm. 14 and 26. Mm -hmm. But the comforter, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So that's what the comforter is. He's the Holy Spirit and he's the teacher. He can teach you. He'll be sent in the name of Yahshua. So see, that's the name of the Holy Spirit. The world don't even know what the Holy Spirit's name is. Mm -hmm. You understand? You tell them the name Yahshua and they just, it means nothing. Jesus is my savior. You understand? That's yeah. how powerful them. Well, anyway, this influence of those demons are. Uh, and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So we're not against people. We're just against the false doctrine taught to them. And they just haven't been taught right. Right. And uh, this world can influence people in a lot of crazy ways. Uh, uh, they take advantage of your good nature and do all kind of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, if you've been living in this world very long, you just, you're, you've met a enough liars. Yes. There's, there's no shortage of liars, are there? Ah. Oh. So, and it's really a terrible <laughs> thing. Uh, so, uh, and that's really what they, you know, I mean, it's, uh, and that's what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with the Holy Spirit when you're dealing with these, these hate mongers and these liars and these, uh, and it's, it's just a, it's a satanic spirit working in people. And you look good. And they need help just like we, we needed help. And this mm. teaching is the help. This gospel will mm. help anybody if you sit down long enough. Mm. Uh, okay, we were in, well, we can't read all, well, anyway, we're on the nine, the nine gifts of the spirits where we were. Mm -hmm. And we've gone through the discerning of spirits, which is a very important uh, gift of the spirit. Uh, and we've read, so I guess we've read about seven of them, haven't we? Was it First Corinthians to twelve and eight, nine, and whatever it is, and then you got Galatians five twenty two. That's the uh, fruit of the spirit, and there's nine of them. Mm -hmm. and these are the things I've he heard chose. of the fruit of the spirit. Yes, I've heard of the fruit of the spirit, but I didn't know it was something else. Well, we wrote, read, we just was reading the gifts of the spirit in First yes. Corinthians 12. We didn't finish with that either. Uh, we got you to want the to You want to go back to that? Yeah, we got the discerning of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we didn't count them either, I don't think, but you'll count that there's nine there. Uh, Where is it? First Corinthians what? It was started, at, it started eight there. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Eight says the given one's given the spirit of wisdom. That's one. Another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Two. Another, faith by the same spirit. Three. To another, gifts of the healing by the same spirit. Four. Working of miracles. Five. Prophecy. Six. Discerning of spirits. That's seven. And then to another, different diverse kinds of tongues. That's eight. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. Nine. There is nine gifts. I mean, mm. of the spirit. But all these work at that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Mm -hmm. And the man that had this vision of revelation, he had all nine of them. <laughs> wow. And <laughs> so those words. were gifts, those were gifts of the spirit. That's yes? right. Okay. And now Galatians 5:22, that's where the nine fruits of the spirit which is love understanding patience that's um, right that's where the nine, that's right five uh, Galatians 5 22 is the fruit of the spirit okay that's right i've heard of that okay well, five, five twenty two. it's the same 
a Holy Spirit, one speaking to Corinthians, now he's speaking to the Galatians, but he's, it's the same principle there. Uh, go ahead. Tell about the nine promise, Frank. Yeah, I know. 522. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no penalty. Now, right there, the fruit of the spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, that's three, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, that's six, faith, seven, meekness, eight, and temperance, nine. Against such there's no law, and they that are the Messiahs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. What does okay? temperance, temperance mean? That means control. Control. It means you're able to control yourself. Oh, okay. You can't say the devil made me do it. Yeah, because because like when somebody uh, pushes your buttons, you might want to go off on them. Yeah, <laughs> but you need you need. A I little... need self control. <laughs> yeah, some and, that, and when somebody was fighting. And the Holy Spirit can't control you. Yeah. Yeah. When they were fighting over Moses' seat, the angel just said, Yahweh rebuke you. Mm. He didn't go That's off. Good. He didn't have to mm. get mm. Yeah, it's a That's great right. Mm. That's right. Mm. And these things take take a while. We're like, you can be like a baby. You understand these things? You grow in these things. It isn't something that just happens overnight, if you know what I right. mean. Right, yeah. I, do. I do. And that's how he teaches us because we all make mistakes. Right. And you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna go through those things. Yeah, I uh, made a mistake once. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's in the second mistake. I remember, like he said, he said one time, if I wrote a book of my mistakes, it'd be a big one. Mm -hmm. Right. He said, yeah. I don't know if I could go over it, around it, under it. He said, but the one mistake you don't want to make is to not know want to know Yahweh and lose your soul. Mm. Yeah. Um, you got first second Peter one and four. These are nine also. Now here's the Holy Spirit through Peter saying this. See? <clears throat> second Peter one and four. It's it's kind of high. Uh Dr. Allen, I can't read it off the screen. Dr. Pratt, can you take over? I got a, I got somebody at my door. It says, Where, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence see uh that's being careful there add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience, uh, patience holiness and the holiness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall be neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. But he, that, but he that lacketh these things is blind mm -hmm. and cannot see afar off mm. and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Mm -hmm. Then says, wherefore, the rather oh, brother, uh, give diligence to make your. I'm sorry for clapping. I know we are supposed to be. We don't worship with the hand. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Had election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. Of our King and Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. <laughs> Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yay. Yeah. And he says, and then he talks about uh, Dr. Allen. I'm sorry, Dr. Allen. 
So what did you just finish reading? Second Peter um, was chapter one, four verses. Yeah, no, it was Second Peter first chapter four oh. through uh, 11, 12. First chapter four through 12. Thank you. Yeah. And then he says, I think, yeah, I think it need as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, even as our, sa my sa our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, have showed me. In other words, you are not going to live forever in a physical body. That's right. why you want to be spiritually prepared now right. uh, to get ready for the next, the next uh, age, which is, re you know, receiving. Well, if you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive an immortal glorified body. He gave you this physical body and give you physical life. Well, the Holy Spirit, if you receive him, he's going to give you an immortal glorified body throughout eternity to be one of his angels and mm. give him praise throughout eternity. And there's nothing worth losing that over. Mm -hmm. yes. That's why we come to this school to be edified wow. and grow in this knowledge and understanding. Yeah. It was so hard. It's been so hard. And I've been so angry. I've been so angry and I've worked and I've worked and I've worked and I've taken anger management and I've went to church and I've prayed and I've done all these things and I'm just like, what is the truth? Like, what am I not doing? What am I not doing? And now that I have the exact, now I know where to, the questions that I've always had, even as a little child in Catholic school, oh, I couldn't stand it. I had so many <laughs> questions. Like I so, knew they yeah. were lying to me, you know, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do anything about it. And I'm just like, what is going on? Oh, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Candace, Candace, we all felt the same way in some way, form, or fashion. You are yeah. not alone. So oh, just know true. that, just know that you're in the right How place you? now. Be grateful yeah. and thankful and yeah. suck up everything that you can. But you have to, you have to study to show yourself yeah. approved. So uh, yes. praise Yashua. Yeah. Praise you. That's beautiful, guys. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you all. Everyone. Yeah. And Paul yeah. also said, be ye angry and sin not. Yes. So you will experience anger. Oh, I might need to. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's that, right. I need to put that on a post -it. Uh, what was that, Paul? <laughs> be ye angry and sin not. Be ye oh. angry. Okay. Yeah, that's, I think and. that's what that four, uh, Ephesians 4 and 30 or something. Okay, I'm I'll, not sure, but anyway, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I guess you uh, let's see, where is that? Uh, thank you, yeah, that's 26 there. For well, for 425 says, Where for, for put away lying, speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, which is your anger, neither give place to the devil. <laughs> yeah, so those are things he was telling them in Ephesians there. Mm. Mm -mm. And he tells them a lot of stuff to do there, you know, I mean, but uh, read four, I mean, Revelation 3 and 19. That's what we're trying to, this is the seventh assembly. And, and by the tabernacle pattern, the seventh step is the most holy place. So he's really telling you what, uh, should happen uh, with you in your heart and mind when you're presented with the truth. Uh, uh, this is what the Holy Spirit told him. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. In other words, you, we had to be corrected. We just didn't know the right thing. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Repent means to change. And this thing will change you. It changes your life. We, 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 we were, we're not the same person we heard when we first came in, heard this teaching. And it says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking at, the, at your heart and mind. That's the, that's the door he's knocking at. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, it says any man hear my voice. Some people don't want to hear his voice and open the door. I will come into him 
and will sup with him and he with me. Now that's the true supper. <laughs> is him coming into you and supping with you and you with him. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit me in my throne. And isn't that where the, uh, uh, the most holy place is the seventh step? Isn't there a mercy seat there? So that's, he said, he'll grant with, to sit you within his throne, even as I've also overcome and have sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assemblies. So we kind of spent a long time on that there, but uh, if you were benefited, then praise Joshua the Messiah. Praise, praise Joshua the Messiah. They made a song about that too. I stand at the door and knock. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's the song. That was good. Mm. Church is the body of Yahshua. Lecture given by Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley on July 24th, 1971 at the Beverly Hills Hilton in California. Received from Kenneth Haverly and Braverly, excuse me, and Beverly Allen, one 90 minute audio cassette tape. Lucy, did you want to be Dr. Kenley and I do the scripture or how would you do it? Uh, well, in here, it starts off with this introduction before the actual class. Okay. So we want to read that. And I do have a comment regarding that last uh, uh, sentence on there. So uh, we can start any time. Do you want me to? Either way, it's up to you. Okay. Dr. Kinley spoke twice during the 1971 International Convention. His first lecture of this convention is dated July 23rd, 1971, and titled Here I Am, and is contained in the previous transcript book, number 27, Dr. Kinley Transcript. In it, he states, quote, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Now, what I want to say is, here I am. Believe it or not, I'm here. And I want to let you know that I know what my purpose is. That's right. I knew it back in the realm of eternity and declared the end from the beginning. And I've been right all, I've been right along all the time. Now we're gonna get into some of these things tomorrow and we'll talk with you about it. And so that you can see for yourself whether it is true that I did receive a vision. Tell you the truth about that thing. I just may decide to tell you the truth about that tomorrow. Been away and so you can understand. Now the real facts in the cases are these. I received Yahshua the Messiah who is in the Father. Now that's what I, now that's what I really received. And it was him in me that's revealing that to you. But I want to let you know, I died once hanging out there on the cross. Now it's my turn. We'll talk to you more about this thing tomorrow. Okay. Now, uh, what I wanted to say regarding that statement about him saying he died once hanging out there on the cross, uh, this has come up many times here in Albuquerque, and Dr. Beverly Allen, Dr. Freddie Allen were present there, and Dr. Kinley said, I am speaking deep in my spirit. He was not saying it was him physically on the cross. Because we got people in this school that are trying to make him be the Messiah. And he never said any such thing. So I just wanted to clarify that before anybody takes the statement literally. It is not. He said, I am speaking deep in the spirit. Thank you, Dr. Alton. Scripture reading, 1 John 1 and 4. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This is the message 
which we have heard of him and declare unto you that Yahweh is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Excuse, excuse me, are you reading the scripture reading again? First John. That's what it says. Yeah, we read that as the scripture reading. Right. Okay, so did you want me to start as the moderator? Yeah, we could just. Later. Thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Pratt, you want me to take it back or? Yes. Okay, all right, let me do this. Are you going to change the screen or can I start? Well, yeah, it's going to be. You see it? Yes. Okay. Well. Moderate. Those of you who are what might be called regular members of the school can well appreciate that when I say it gives me pleasure to introduce the founder of our school, you know whereof I speak. There are a number of us who are conscious that within that physical body, is the spirit that Yahweh has sent into this world in this age to edify those of his choice. And it does indeed give me great pleasure to introduce the founder of our school, Dr. Henry C. Kinley. Thank you ever so much. I'm always happy and glad to testify in the behalf of our brethren and savior Yahshua the Messiah. Now, I don't mean to stand up here and say that because that Yahweh is in me, that he's not in you. I don't mean to say that because Yahweh is, ma is made manifest in all of us. Now, there's some things that I want to call your attention to in particular. And we have kind of routined down specifically for this specific meeting. Now we're going to call it special, and we're going to ask for, as we, as he, as excuse me, and as always been stated, your in your undivided attention, and you try to pay attention. Now one of the reasons why that we have been so specific in making those statements is because there are so many erroneous doctrines out in the world until the people actually really do not know which way to go or what to do and who's right and who's wrong. And you must always remember that you have an adversary, the devil, and he's trying to play every note or every tune that he can to lure you into some of his, his church. Now, it seems to be a pretty tough, tough thing to stand up here and say that all that the church churches is wrong. And I don't think anybody ought to do that unless they have or possess the ability to prove it. Now, first of, excuse me, first of all, what is the church? Now, here is Coloss here in Colossians. I'm not going, I'm not going to ask you to read all of these scriptures. I'll tell you which one to read. They say that the church or the congregation or assembly is the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, do you understand that? Well, now somebody might get up and re read that out of the Bible and still miss the boat. Now you, all of you that have the spirit in you, you are the body of the Messiah. Now we're going to go right back and have repeated what, excuse me, what we just had Dr. Trainum to read in a scripture lesson. I do want you to get some identification out of this so that you have so that you will understand, better understand, then I will com comment on it. Would you mind, please? The micro 
phone and read the first few verses of the fourth epistle of John. And you pay strict attention to what is said here. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of Yahweh. Now, just a minute. It says, beloved, believe not every spirit. You have something over whether they are of Yahweh. Now, bear this in mind. John is reading in those that possess the spirit. Writing. John is writing to those. John is writing to those who possess the spirit. Now, if you don't possess it, you don't have nothing to try it in. I'm trying to make this thing clear to you as possible because a, a lot of them will sit back and read that and say that we, that we are the church and or we are the body of, of, of Christ and, and also and make statements like that and deceive and fool the people. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're incapable of judgment because you must have the judgment in you in order to be the judge. Now, does that make it clear? All right now. It is, <clears throat> it's that don't believe every spirit, but try the spirit. But if you're going to try it, you must have it. Now, if you have it, then you're capable of discerning which spirit is speaking. And then in that way, you won't be led astray. Now, if you pay strict attention, you'll find some conviction down here. All right, read. Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Yahweh. Now try them, whether they are of Yahweh. Now you have in your King James Version of the Bible, whether they are of God. Now God is a title, but God being a title and not a name. I'll also, also mention here that Lord is a title also. And that is not a name. All right, we don't. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now listen here. Now a lot of people want to go back and say that he's talking about when Yahshua the Messiah come in the world. Now that's not what John is talking about. He's talking about the thing as it is as it is since the day of Pentecost, not before, when he was walking around here in the face of the earth in a physical body. All right, read. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Now, wait just a minute. Now, this is what they go by and hear by. Know ye the spirit. Now, right by this. Repeat. Hereby, hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Now hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Now write by this, all right, read. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua the Messiah is come. Now every spirit that testifies that Yahshua the Messiah will soon come, will soon be home. No. No. Now you see the difference? Yes. Yes. Now everybody is looking for Jesus or looking for Yahshua the Messiah. Now, now every spirit that testifies that it is, is come, which is present tense, is of Yahweh. Now, is that clear? Yes. Everywhere you go, the people are looking for him to come, not recognize recognizing the fact that he has come, come already. And every one of them that's saying that he is coming, that's satanic. You got that? Now, I don't say that. The apostle John said it. All right, read on. 
And every spirit that confesses, confesses not that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. Every spirit that testifies not that Yahshua is come in the flesh, it is not of Yahweh. Now, is that clear to you? Now do, now you do some thinking about that. Read on. And this is that spirit of anti-Messiah. Now this is that spirit of anti-Messiah. Not that's the spirit now. of your, now that, the spirit of your adversary. And it is not of Yahweh. Read a little further. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. Now John is saying, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already. And even now, at that time back there. And if you look at the chron chronology of at the top of the page, you will find when he wrote the epistle and it was already in the world at that time. You see that now? All right. And even now already is it in the world. And even now is already in the world. Read on. We are of Yahweh. Ye are of Yahweh. Little children. Little children. And have overcome it. And have overcome it. Because greater is he that is in you. That for greater is he that is in you. Than that which is in the world. Than that which is in the world. That will do with that. Now I want, excuse me, now I want, read over there in John 1. Excuse me, in John. I gave you the verse in the in the same epistle. First John, the third chapter, first and second verses. Now you listen at this close. Read. Behold what manner of love. Behold what manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us. The Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of Yahweh. That we should call. Now, I want you to let this soak in because it will help you. That we should be called sons. Saints. No. no, we should be called saints. That's what it says, right? Right. That we should be called saints. And then everybody says, no. no. That we should be called Christians. No, no sir. sir. <laughs> that we should be called Roman Catholics. No. no. That we should be called Protestants. No. no <laughs> Maybe you didn't read it right, Doc. Try it again. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Mm -hmm. That we should be called the sons of Yahweh. That we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Now, I want to tell you why I had that read that way. It's because now when Yahshua the Messiah, who Yahweh acknowledged to be his son, now you are, are, a, now you are a son of Yahweh, just now as he was then. Now, if you let that soak, it'll help you. Then, if you be a son of Yahweh, then Yahweh is in you, and you in him, and the Messiah in you. Now, do you know what I'm talking about? Now, you just simply have not been taught that out in the world. You have been taught that Jesus is, com is coming. Is it? Is that right? Now, since we're we've gonna excuse me now since we've got the true names now somebody will be saying yashua is coming
But now I want to make this real good and clear to you so you don't make a mistake. Now that makes me have to go in the 14th chapter of John, of St. John, which is the same writing and the 26th verse. The I think writing. about the 26th verse. Say it again. Which is the same man writing which is the same man writing the 26th verse. I think about the 26th verse and I want you to pay attention to every, everything that I call attention to and then that and that everyone that, excuse me, and that is the only way that you can be helped. All right, read. But the comforter, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name. Now listen, whom the Father will send in my name. Did you get that? So now that's why we say it's Yahshua in you, because you have excuse me, received the Holy Spirit whom Yahweh has sent in the name of Yahshua. I don't mean gonna send, I mean already sent. Read on. Shall teach you all things. Shall teach you some things. No. No. A few things. No, no sir. sir. Shall teach you all things. Read. And bring all things to your remembrance. And bring all things, not just some things, from the time that he, that he chose those disciples. And for three and a half years, as he taught, he knew, he knew that they were not going to remember any, everything. He knew that. So that therefore, he said, when the comforter is come, first above here, excuse me, above there, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. And now he's telling the comforter, will come whom the father will send in my name. And when he is come, then what? He shall teach you all things. Now he's, now we're telling you this. My earthly name is Henry Clifford Kinley. Is that clear to you? just like Moses' name given to him and any of the rest of them, John and everybody else. Those are earthly names. Now, it doesn't say anything, excuse me, anything at all about Moses teaching anybody. It doesn't say anything about apostles teaching anybody. But now the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things, not some, right? Right. Right. <laughs> Is that plain to you? Now, it behooves you then, whoever is in the book, for you to pay strict attention and recognize the fact that, that no man has the ability to teach you the purpose of Yahweh. He just doesn't have it. His mental facilities and his makeup is inadequate with all faculties excuse me faculties and his makeup is inadequate without the holy spirit and i will say excuse me lucy would you take over yes ma'am and i said that to let you know that yahshua the messiah whom the yahweh has sent in his name or the comforter now that's who the teacher is around here. It is not Henry Clifford Kinley, because I don't know nothing to teach you and neither does anybody else. Now that necessitates me to have the comforter and then for me to keep my big mouth shut and for you to keep your big mouth shut and let the comforter to do the teaching. Now, is it clear? Now that will save a whole lot of our self-exaltation. You see through what I'm talking about. All right, read. Reader? And bring all things to your remembrance. remembrance. 
and said he would bring all things to your remembrance. Is that right? Whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Now let me ask you a question. Do you know the reason why he said that? That's something to think about. Now, why did he say that? Well, I'm going to tell you why he said it. Do you remember that when he come to his disciples, he told them that John and the rest of them, that he had come to fulfill. Now, since he come to fulfill, going through three and a half years that he was along with them, with them fulfilling what was written in the law and in the prophets. He knew that they were incapable of retaining them in them in them what was written in the law and in the prophecy now follow what i mean now when he was along with moses everything he said to moses moses didn't remember and those teachers that were along with those tribes they didn't remember everything i'll give you an instance they said to him said to moses said now, if in the event that we have touched a dead man during the time of the Passover, said, now, can we eat the Passover? You know what Moses said? Said, I don't know. I'll have to ask him. So he went to Joshua in your book and asked him. And he told him, no, you don't eat the Passover until 30 days hence. You see what I mean? And other things that Moses missed missed but he had him right along with him i'll give you another instance so that you can see that if you look down through the first chapter of genesis about the creation of heaven and earth moses saw that the second time he would moses saw that the second time that he was in the mountain now the first time i should tell you this way now the first time he was in the mountain Yahshua told him to tell the children of Israel to clean up themselves and gather up around the mountain. And not a beast, nor a man, or nothing was to touch that mountain, Mount Sinai. And that he would speak to them from the mountain. Well, Moses, he did that. And then he told Moses to come up in the mountain and he would give him tables of stone. Now, I don't have time to go through everything, but I'm trying to show you now why Yahshua the Messiah said what he just what he just read to his disciples. All right. Now, when while Moses was up in the mountain in the first chapter of Genesis in verse 27, Moses said that I think you better read. So Elohim oh. created, created man in his image. So Elohim created man. Now, up above that, it says that, let us make man in our own likeness and in our image. Right? And so now he's saying, so what? So Elohim created man in his image. And Elohim created man in his image. In the image of Elohim created he him. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created. Male and female. Created he him. Now look. Cre created he him. Now look, it didn't say a thing about what he created him out of. You see that? Not a thing. Nothing. So now the third time when he went up in the mountain to take up where he left off at, what did he say then, Doc? He's bringing it back to his remembrance now. Genesis second chapter, fourth verse, holy name version. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's right. And man became a living soul. Now you see that? Now Moses, he didn't put that down in the six days right there. The second time that he went in the mountain, he didn't say it, but he's calling it to his remembrance now that he did create him from the dust of the earth. Now, Moses put that in there, calling it back to his remembrance, what he saw in the vision. So
So that is why, so that is why that Yahshua, the Messiah, after they had followed him through seeing him fulfill what is in the law and what was in the prophecy, he knew that they wasn't going to remember all of it. So he telling them now that all things, when the comforter is come, which is me, and I'll be right with you, and I'll call your attention to these things, and I'll do the preaching through you. Now, is that clear? That had to be fulfilled too. A lot of things that they didn't understand, they actually, they didn't get the understanding of it until after he come in the Holy Spirit. They didn't understand a lot of things that he was doing and asked him about it. You follow me now? So that's why it's so necessary for you to have the Holy Spirit. Do you see what I mean? Do you understand? Now, I'm trying my best to make things clear to you what's going on in the school. Now, that's the best I can do is to clarify everything. That's our goal, so that you will not make so many blunders and errors. And so you will be able to identify the anti-Messiah and the false prophets and the false teachers. No flesh has any right to boast in his sight. Nobody. Thank you, Dr. Harris, for that at the present time. I heard a bell. Are we, is time up? Five minutes, four minutes. Okay. Now we want to call attention to other things that we have put down here. Now one, some of them, we didn't put them down on this paper. So I'm going to call attention to it and tell you what was said. And if you don't think it was said, then I'm going to read that to you of their, their books. Now, my job is showing up the devil. Now, that's what my job is. And I told you that that was what I was sent in the world for. So I'm going to make that clear to you. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses is wrong. And even if they had said they were Jeh Yahweh's Witnesses, they're still wrong. That's right. Doesn't make any difference whether they said they was Yahweh's Witnesses or Jehovah's Witnesses. They're still wrong. Now, here's why. Here's how they're wrong. First, they don't believe in a vision. And everybody that was a witness they had to see Yahweh Elohim in a vision. Just like Moses looked right at Yahweh Elohim create Adam in a vision. All of the prophets, they saw a vision, every last one of them. And if they had not seen one, they could not say that they were his witnesses. Now, Isaiah 43, 12, in your book, Yahweh said, you better read it. Isaiah 43 and 12, I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange L among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, Uh huh. said Yahweh, Uh huh. that I am L. Uh huh. Now, this is Isaiah in the book of Isaiah, but this is not Isaiah talking. It is Elohim through Isaiah, Yahweh Elohim through Isaiah. Now, nobody that had ever, that hadn't seen no vision or nothing, had been revealed to him through a vision. He could not be Yahweh's witness. That's a matter of impossibility. Even if you went to court, if you got up there and they asked you to get up on the witness stand, one of the first things they're going to ask you, what is what your name is, and did you see whatever it was that you're in court for? And if you say no, I didn't see anything, you're 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 not accredited witnesses, a witness. They chase you from the court. Now, if man has got that much sense, we ought to have better sense than to think that these people going around calling themselves Jehovah's Witnesses or Yahweh's Witnesses. It had to be revealed back there in the law and in the prophecy. Now, I did not say over in what you call the New Testament. 
Now he has two witnesses. Now read that, Dr. Harris. Revelation 11th chapter and the third verse. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. My two witnesses, you follow? Well, now, what are his two witnesses? Read. Okay, time's up. Okie dokie. So we're on page 10. Uh, wherever you are, it starts with, these the are the trees. two olive trees. In mm -hmm. These are the two olive trees. Okay. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 midnight to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. With our Jamaica brethren, classes Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and our minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Yeah, I bless your day. You too, dear. Have a wonderful one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone. Praise, Praise Yahshua. Yahshua.